Good day, citizens of the free world. From border to border, coast to coast, and to all the ships at sea, I bring you a warm welcome. This is your correspondent, Jim Tate, and thank you for tuning in to the Tate Chronicles. Join me as we cut through the fog that exists at the leading edge of healthcare technology. Our mission, searching for beneficial disruption in healthcare from emerging technologies. I'm very pleased today. I've got uh, two guests. And they are the co-founders of Med Network. First, I'll, I'll turn to Santosh. Uh, Santosh, please introduce yourself and introduce your co-founder for us. Sure, sure. So I, I'm Santosh Bhavani, the founder and CEO of Med Network. Um, my my uh, background is in computer science and statistics, and I've been working on different problems applying computer vision, machine learning, and AI to biological images for for most of my career. Um, uh, my co-founder, Dr. Amit Mehta, um, he, he can introduce himself. Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Amit Mehta. I am a uh, practicing radiologist uh, with a deep interest in uh, healthcare IT, uh, trained at Harvard University Medical School, and then um, have been practicing as a radiologist in the uh, computer space for uh, the last 10 years. Um, we launched med networks uh, to solve some of the problems that we as physicians see on a day-to-day -day basis in imaging specifically. Uh, and so, uh, well, thank you uh, for that introduction. Glad to have both of you here. Could, could one of you speak a little bit more about the path that uh, led you to founding uh, med networks? Uh, what were the particular issues in uh, imaging, medical imaging, that you felt were pain points or, or need to be addressed with the type of work you're, you're involved with now? Yeah, so our, our background is uh, we work with a lot of different medical device companies, teleradiology firms uh, as part of Semantic MD to deliver AI solutions. And we found that more than just delivering um, AI for, for these uh, different groups, uh, the bigger problem was storage and managing medical imaging data. Uh, if you for anyone who's been involved in a clinical trial or uh, managing a small imaging center, they don't have the resources that you'd find in a large hospital or a large med device company for, for the storage and management of medical imaging data, which, is, which can be very complex. So we wanted to develop a solution for, uh, that, that enables anyone to uh, anywhere in the world to have a cost-effective an easy solution for managing their medical images. And so uh, as part of that, not only managing the images, but um, are you getting into the area of artificial uh, intelligence to uh, have uh, uh, some type of process to actually be involved with the uh, reading and interpretation of those images? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a, a prototype right now where um, we, we've had a lot of success detecting tuberculosis and different diseases in chest x-rays. And we now have a prototype uh, that uh, you can upload your chest x-ray to the blockchain. Uh, it'll automatically diagnose for different indications in the chest x-ray using AI and store the results uh, for, for, the, for the patient. I've got, uh, that really brings up a question for me. Uh, I, uh, in a previous lifetime, I was a clinical director of a large specialty practice, 15 pulmonologists. So we did a lot of chest x-rays. Uh, and then we'd send folks over to the hospital for their CT scans, things like that. Uh, we, uh, they'd be referred to us because of bad x-ray. We, we wouldn't have the x-ray to review. We'd just have a report, so we'd have to shoot another x-ray. Um, and uh, that certainly uh, was time consuming. And then we couldn't compare our current x ray we took today to the one they'd had two weeks ago, which sometimes is very important. Uh, whether it was uh, a mass in, in the chest or, or, or fluid buildup, something that was a very dynamic process. Um, we thought a big uh, jump had been made in technology when we were able to hook up. Uh, to the hospital's PAC system and actually uh, view some of the CT scans in that. Uh, but it sounds like wh what y'all are doing is about 10 stages beyond what we were doing five years ago, almost. Um, and so, uh, but you mentioned uploading these images to a blockchain. Now, is this a public or a private uh, blockchain or one of those consortium blockchains? Because those images are big, uh, probably too big to be on a, a public uh, blockchain. How are they actually stored? 
That, that, that's a good question. So we, we offer both public and private uh, methods for storage. Um, in healthcare, you always need a private option. There's going to be um, even a private option is a large amount of data. It could be a consortium of it could be a healthcare system. Uh, we're mm -hmm. deploying it in a couple imaging centers around the world in, in the U.S., India, and Singapore. And what we're finding is that we're, we don't actually have to store the image itself on the blockchain, but it's really just a hash pointing to the image. So okay, the exactly. images, we, yeah. we can, um, uh, the pitch to the imaging center says, use all your extra hard drive space lying around uh, to consolidate and create your own virtual um, a story pack system. And, uh, you, you mentioned uh, Singapore. Uh, is Singapore a? Uh, do you just mention that because that's a kind of an Asian center for uh, radiographic development, or? or yeah, yeah or that's that, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so so we, we're actually uh, Med Network is incorporated in Singapore. Uh, we uh -huh. have a strong network out there. Uh, from some of the previous work we've done uh, out in Southeast Asia around detecting tuberculosis. And li like mm -hmm. you mentioned, there's chest x-rays are a big deal there because you have large populations of workers moving around different uh, areas between Malaysia to Bangladesh. And, and uh, those workers all get screened the moment they enter the airport with the chest x-ray. So it's, it's uh, oh, really? really interesting dealing with these large data sets of um, uh, in large populations. Well, and, uh, I, and so that's uh, almost the uh, 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 the use case because uh, all those folks that are coming through that need to be screened. Um, it's kind of uh, and you piqued my interest with, with Singapore. My son's in uh, college at the University of North Carolina, uh, very involved with computer science, and and he's going to study uh, in Singapore at the University of Singapore. And uh, so many resources from around the world are moving their think tanks and development to Singapore, especially uh, around blockchain. There's just a lot going on in Singapore at the really leading edge of healthcare informatics, it seems like. So uh, that's fascinating. So it sounds like you have a pretty good presence there already. Um, yeah, so, yeah, and I think uh, your yeah. son's making a good choice. It's uh, uh, we're, One of the big reasons we're out there is because, like you said, the government support you have – uh, agencies like ASTAR that are focused purely on AI and cutting edge technologies. Well, um, you know, some of the, and uh, I'm glad we have a, a radiologist on board. Uh, let me kind of ask you uh, a question. I guess you've certainly uh, said like you practice, certainly have the experience uh, for a number of years, if not decades. Now, compared to maybe 20 years ago, uh, what were the frustrations that you had in, in managing and interpreting and uh, and analyzing radiographic images compared to today. What was it like 20 years ago? Well, there's been a now? big change in the evolution of uh, interpretation from film-based uh, hardware to computer-based. And so the, it, the advent of PACs or picture archiving communication systems allowed us to do a lot of things differently that we couldn't do before, um, primarily around axial and cross-sectional imaging where you can now look at large data sets, um, it, which you couldn't do before because each image had to be a single image uh, layered adjacent to one another. When, when you can stack these images in three dimensions, you can start seeing a lot of things that you couldn't see before. It's also allowed us to do reconstructions in three dimensions uh, and manipulate the data in a different way that we can get information out of that data, which we couldn't get out of a film-based um, world. So that has been a huge um, uh, evolution in imaging and has allowed us to do a lot more, which we couldn't do before. The next evolution here is um, the use of artificial intelligence and using algorithms to help the human radiologist become more efficient. So to do tasks that maybe either mm -hmm. detection tasks that can utilize computer-based algorithms to help us be more efficient and provide better care for the patient. You know, one of the things uh, I've been involved with for a number of years is healthcare information interoperability. We've, well, the government has spent tens of billions of dollars trying to get interoperable uh, healthcare data and, and EHRs out there. Uh, and and the, the file uh, that uh, interoperability is based upon is this uh, CCDA, which carries clinical information on one patient. It's codified. It's human-readable, machine-readable, problems, 
medication, medication allergies, you know, uh, diagnoses, things like that. Uh, but uh, because of the size of uh, images, it, uh, they required CCDA by the CMS, the Office of Magic Coordinator. Uh, it, it's, it's not set to carry images. Uh, and so uh, right now, uh, uh, I guess there's been a Band-Aid uh, attempt uh, with the health information exchanges uh, to maybe upload images to uh, HIE if somebody lives in Georgia and, and they're in Florida and doc there wants to get access. Uh, maybe if there's an HIE uh, where that's stored. Uh, are many of these images stored at the, uh, we, they used to be called uh, RIOs, uh, Regional Health Information Organizations, and they got a bad name, so now they're health information exchanges. Are a lot of these images stored there in these HIEs? No, in, in fact, that is, that is probably one of the biggest problems in imaging today, and one of the uh, notable reasons of the genesis of med networks is that if you get a study done in one geographic location and you go to a second geographic location, it is almost impossible for the receiving institution to get that imaging. Um, and so what ends up happening in the healthcare system is that the imaging just gets repeated. And that's not good for either the patient or the system, uh, but the incentives are aligned in a way that it does benefit the providers in a fee-for-based system. So that is one of the things that we're trying to solve by um, creating a network where imaging can be, a repo the repository can be accessed independent of geographic location with all the security and the, and the tools with, uh, behind the blockchain. Sure. Well, uh, uh, a number of years ago, I was very involved with uh, clinical um, issues related to medical travel. Uh, a lot of people uh, travel with the United States. They go to the Mayo Clinic or, or they go to Johns Hopkins. But there are a lot of folks who travel from country to country. And, and one of the big issues always is uh, being able to get access to those images. You know, uh, a, a lot of providers are very satisfied just to have a report they can read, an interpretation. But um, um, a lot of providers want the actual image so that they have both the interpretation as well as the image. And that was a giant problem. Uh, people uh, without insurance would go to India and some fantastic cardiovascular surgeries done in India. They'd come back here and, and they wouldn't have those images. Uh, so uh, I imagine even the issue of uh, locally sharing those uh, on, on a global level. and. Uh, and Tosh, what you mentioned about those workers, when they go through the, the airports, they have a chest X-ray right then. Uh, just uh, as the culture becomes more global, the need to push that, um, those images in, in any of the health records is, is critical. Now, um, we, we kind of mentioned some artificial intelligence and we mentioned blockchain. Are there some other emerging technologies that you see coming into place in terms of uh, radiography and imaging, I'll let either one of you. I would, yeah, yeah. I, I, I would point out one of the other trends I've been seeing is more of the uh, transmission of medical imaging data is going is becoming more more um, on a mobile interface. So mm -hmm. for for a lot of the trials that we do using AI, applying AI to large data sets of chest X-rays. We're getting uh, chest X-ray sent to us, or or WhatsApp from Africa. So it's a, it's coming, or or over WeChat, we'll receive our chest X-rays. So we're getting data in a in a very unsecure form, and it's uh, being done on a on these mobile mobile uh, messaging platforms that everyone uses. I see the. the um the idea of, uh, and did, did you say that they are uh, um, unsecured transmissions? Is that what you were saying? Yes, yes, uh, yeah. because the, those platforms don't natively support um, the, the encryption needed or the, yes. or the viewing viewer needed for uh, medical imaging data. So that, that's really part of the challenge of why, why you need a medical image storage system versus just a Dropbox or a box. You, you, you have to have the uh, both the encryption as well as de-identification, and then finally being able to view it um, on on any device. Um, when was uh, take a couple steps back here? Med Network. Uh, let's talk a bit more about the company. Uh, when was it founded? It, it is founded uh, j just last year in tw uh, 20, mm -hmm. 2017. 
exactly. Um, and um, if if we could uh, put on our uh, or, or take a look in, in the crystal ball, five years from now, uh, there's certainly going to be some uh, emerging technologies that we don't even know about yet. You know, uh, that's one thing to me that's so fascinating about blockchain. We don't know where blockchain's uh, really going to bring the biggest benefit. Uh, there are going to be benefits we don't even know about. Same is true of the artificial intelligence. Um, uh, but uh, talk to me if you could, could about the direction you feel the company's headed over the next three to five years. Is it just working out your, your current vision, or do you see some other areas you may be moving into solving some other uh, image-related problems? So our, our, our primary focus is really providing this as a service for patients and, and providers, so in, mm -hmm. small imaging centers. Um, what, what we're finding is there are much uh, larger organizations like governments, so the Singapore government's working on developing their own teleradiology platform to reach rural areas as well in, in Malaysia and using blockchain to manage the data. Um, we have interest in Bangladesh, where we know one of the leading distributors for Philips, and Philips has a great system for managing medical imaging data, but they're selling to large hospitals with big budgets. All the smaller imaging centers uh, really don't have any solutions other than uh, sending, mailing, uh, burning CDs and mailing, sending it around. So what we're finding is that there's a global need for Im medical image sharing, and, uh, and teleradiology, and down the road we want to start integrating uh, more teleradiology and telediagnostics, which is our, our AI services, mm -hmm. into the platform so that both patients and providers can uh, upload data, get a second opinion, uh, and, uh, and manage their payments uh, easily. And uh, when you mentioned uh, managing your payments, uh, 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 s some of the healthcare related uh, issues laid to payment and reimbursement. Uh, uh, some folks are thinking that using smart contracts on uh, a blockchain uh, can help facilitate that. Is, is that, are you using any smart contracts at all? Or do you anticipate using smart contracts in the blockchain? So we, we, we do use smart contracts part of our platform. Mm -hmm. it's, um, mm -hmm. We primarily use it to apply the AI. So our, the way we structure our, our system is when people upload the medical imaging data, it gets automatically de-identified. And then you add in, um, um, we, we can apply the AI to the image and put in the metadata from the, that the AI system retrieves into mm -hmm. the, into the Im image data itself. So we're, we're using smart contracts as a way to um, provide a preliminary diagnosis. Um, but in terms of the reimbursement uh, landscape, it, it varies so much across around sure. the world. And our, our focus is primarily, primarily the private sector, um, places that don't get reimbur that won't get a, a insurance reimbursement or, or any kind of abatement sure. of fees. Sure. Um, you mentioning uh, and discussing smart contracts, um, is any of your work on the Ethereum platform? Yes, uh, that's right. So we're, we're based uh, primarily on the Ethereum platform, and it has mm -hmm. a strong developer community in JavaScript that makes, makes it easy for us to, to hire. You know, uh, and that was really going to be my second question, how difficult it was to find competent people in this uh, on a scale of uh, 1 to 10, 10 being the hardest, uh, what's it like trying to find people that are subject matter experts in Ethereum and smart contracts? Uh, it's, it's definitely pretty hard right now, as with yeah. any new technology. Um, so uh, part of it is we've taken some very skilled JavaScript programmers and trained them um, mm -hmm. in, the, in the right technologies to get started working in blockchain. Uh, but we, we, have, we now have a few very good blockchain developers on staff. You know, uh, the thing about uh, uh, Ethereum, uh, you know, uh, is th the number of projects that have been launched on Ethereum, uh, and really hundreds of thousands of uh, developers uh, working with uh, Ethereum, uh, just from a uh, blockchain uh, view, uh, Ethereum looks like it is a platform that's going to be around for, for quite some time, just because they're an early mover, and they have 
uh, so much going for him, so much momentum, no doubt about that. Did you, uh, uh, when you when you founded the company and started doing this work, did you consider issuing a token, an alternate coin? Many companies in, in your uh, arena have done that or, or will do that. Yeah, yeah, we de- we definitely considered it, and it's still something uh, that's on our on our plate. But we're um, we're right now focused on validating the technology in imaging centers, making sure, sure. that um, it, it does perform to, uh, 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 it does perform in a in a way that we can then open it up to the public uh, instead of mm-hmm. just selling uh, primarily B two B. Sure. Um, and uh, you, you mentioned uh, being able to uh, perhaps not store images uh, on the blockchain, but a hashed pointer on the blockchain to a particular image that could be uh, pegged out to some, who knows, any kind of database out there or to uh, a private blockchain uh, of some kind. Um, and uh, the issue that kind of comes up for me is uh, it seems like a great use for blockchain will be in clinical research. Uh, and so uh, to be able to freeze, uh, whether it's lab results or radiographic images uh, uh, during a clinical trial of medications or procedures or, or devices, uh, that uh, what you're doing on on the image side uh, and blockchain would really help bring more validity to any type of clinical trial. And and I say that because uh, once, uh, that's one of the beauties, of course, of blockchain is uh, once something is documented and, and it's in a completed block, you can't change it. Uh, and so what I always wonders with a lot of clinical trials uh, where there's so much involved from a financial standpoint and from a uh, therapeutic standpoint, uh, where there's the human desire to make things look a certain way uh, uh, w- with the results. But to be able to, to freeze that in a blockchain, uh, uh, to me, has the potential to really help the, the quality of results that are being reported. So I don't know if you have any thoughts about that, but but certainly helps – the clinical trial uh, side of things. No, I, I agree. We're dealing with some trials right now where we have to uh, take a lot of extra uh, development efforts to prove traceability um, and prove the mm-hmm. long-term storage of the data. Uh, with with blockchain in the way a lot of the storage co- companies in in the blockchain space are setting it up, you have replication and and long-term storage almost built into the to the way the platform is designed. You know, um, and we only have about uh, three uh, uh, or four more minutes here, so I want to take a couple steps back and get both your uh, opinions uh, a little bit. Uh, there's this gigantic uh, amount of hype uh, in blockchain now. Uh, certainly there's some hype in artificial intelligence, but the hype around blockchain dwarfs it. Uh, and um, uh, when I talk to people about blockchain or uh, in particular, or really any emerging technology, but especially the blockchain, people seem to want to understand it. Now, I don't understand how email works. Hardly anybody knows how email works. I mean, really works. But, but there's this kind of desire of, well, how does this blockchain stuff really work? And so we're very early in blockchain uh, uh, acceptance and, and disruption. And Five or ten or fifteen years from now, it's all in the background. I mean, I don't, I don't need to know how a PAC system works to take full advantage of it. Uh, so we're in this kind of funny period of hype around blockchain and naysayers around blockchain. Uh, uh, do you kind of agree with that? Where do you think we are in the whole trajectory of, of blockchain acceptance, and or is it all just so confused with? Uh, uh, Bitcoin, which really has almost nothing to do with blockchain. Uh, when you when you talk to folks, uh, what kind of feedback do you get to them? Are they excited about blockchain? Or are they not? Do they want to know about it? How do they just view the technology out there? Well, there? There's definitely a lot of excitement around it, and uh, and it's really interesting excitement coming directly from the physicians. I, I, I we've been in the AI space for a while in in medical in in healthcare, and the excitement we see around blockchain. From directly from the physicians is as much uh, I'd say it's much 
much more interest than we saw even back in 2011 when AI was picking up. So it's it's kind of like the same cycle AI went through around uh, 2011, 2012. Uh, the mm-hmm. new, newer methods came out of the market. Um, there's lots of hype, but I mean now I regularly talk into my phone and have it have it write emails. So it's, there's there's real use cases, uh, there movie recommendations, real use cases that, that came out of AI. Um, and I think sure. blockchain will be the same. It'll be there'll be like a five to seven year hype cycle that will go through and uh, at the end of the day it might just be a very good database that everyone uses and they, they forget that it's even there but it's, it's built on blockchain. Exactly. Uh, well, um, uh, the time has really passed quickly so uh, l- let me say uh, uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us on this episode of the Tate Chronicles. I offer a special salute to my guests, the two co-founders of Med Networks. You can, uh, oh, by the way, how, what's the best way for somebody to contact y'all? What, what's your website? Uh, just mednetwork.io. Okay, perfect. You can find more information on this show's program page at healthcarenowradio.com. Until we meet again, here's wishing you smooth sailing and safe harbors. <laughs>